First big meal of the day, check. Coffee, check. Video being uploaded, check. Day is right on track. So in the midst of my leg workout, just checked my blood sugar. It was 84, so I'm feeling a little bit low. Had to grab a Powerade. And you know, as I'm getting leaner, guys, my insulin sensitivity is like skyrocketing a little bit more. And I have to be more aware of that. You know, this happens a little bit more frequent than usual, but I've actually been really, really good on it. I've been getting as many low blood sugars as I think, which I'm really surprised and happy about. Been managing it really well, but you know what? It happens, guys, in the middle of a workout. Pretty much gonna chug this and wait like a good five, six, maybe 10 minutes before I do my top set, which I'm doing 300 pounds, by the way, on the squat for three. That's the goal, but I'm feeling a little little weird, you know? Not a lot of people actually know this feeling when you have type one diabetes and you have low blood sugar, but for those of you that know, you know. And if you don't know, then now you know. And if you don't know, now you know, you know. Not gonna lie, I had low blood sugar once when we were kickboxing back in the day, my brother and I, and it felt like that. I felt like that one scene Wolf of Wall Street. They did pow. I mean, I had skipped the tingle phase and went straight to the drool phase. The cerebral palsy phase. <laughs> Just try struggling to get out of his car. Oh, oh my god. So respect to all you type 1 diabetics out there. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Even with freaking low blood sugar. Boom. I'll never let this shit get me down. Ever. Ever. I got a goal in mind. I'm gonna get it. I know it might sound a little like crazy right now. Still kind of have low blood sugar. So I got the endorphins running a little bit. But don't let this shit get you down, man. Fucking fight it. You know you're getting lean. Let me fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Jesus. eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Myron. So on to the next movements after squat. We're doing some leg press. And usually with leg press, I do my first set heavy as usual. Do my first set of around six to eight reps, and then I'll drop it by a plate per set. And I'll do three total sets. So I'll do six plates for six to eight. Then I'll do five plates for like eight to 10 plus, And then like four plates for 12 to 15. Next up, got some Bulgarian split squats. It's gonna be the next exercise after leg pressing. I should do two sets of these guys. I guess see that was a total fail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do two sets of these. My first set heavy, 50 for four to six, and then I'll do like, I'll have to wait, so I'll do like 25 pounds for 10 to 12 or so. That is the game plan. These are really hard, by the way, so really focus on form, focus on going pretty deep. Up. Oh, you just, broke. you just broke a sweat though. That first rep. Wow. See? Notice by the way, I didn't go to failure. If I go to failure, I'll snap all kinds of shit. <laughs> snap like a pretzel stick, bro. <laughs> like gluten free pretzels, bro. Yeah. 
He trains calves. Do you know that? Now, one of the things that nobody cares about, calves and abs, even though a good amount of people do care about that. But yeah, the worst part ever, I freaking hate doing calves and abs, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Just because you're so drained and tired by the end of your workout, and they're kind of just, like, I do my best not to half-ass them, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't go as planned. But yeah, I usually hit abs two, three times a week, and I usually always hit them with my leg workouts, super set them with my calf movement, just to kind of get it over with. <laughs> Forgot to mention too that I do four total sets with calves and I'll do my first two sets heavy around maybe like eight to ten and then my last two sets with less weight, more reps, more uh, hypertrophy around like 15 plus reps. So check it out, post-workout blood sugar, 134. Even though I hit a mid-workout low, bounced back guys, bounced back after that power aid and the workout still felt absolutely incredible. It's in PRs and overall just felt really, really good. So I did not let that low blood sugar get me down, but I'm actually gonna have a snack right now. So it is, what is it, 6.30? Mm. 6.30 p.m. right now, I've only had one big meal and as you all know, I've been normally having two big meals and a one snack in between. And and this is usually my snack in between. I'll have my big meal at around like 2, 3 p.m. And I'll have this at around 6 or 7 p.m. Just one bar. If I'm like pretty damn hungry, I'll have two of them. But lately, it's been one because, I don't know, I've kind of gotten used to it. I don't really get hungry until around like 8 or 9. So yeah, my next big meal will be at around like 9 p.m., 9.30, depending on how early I want to finish off my macros. But yeah, going to have one of these. Then I also have like one client to train. I'm training one of my uh, family friends and giving her the whole personal training thing. So I'm going to have to go back to the gym for a good 45 minutes or so. She's hitting a leg workout. So I'm going to take her through that. And I'm going to Starbucks right now to get some other work, some more online client work done. So, and edit a video. So kind of like a busy day, but yeah, this will hold me off. <laughs> So I'm back at the gym for the second time today. I am training somebody, so yeah, I'm gonna be here for probably around 30, 45 minutes. Gonna be doing a lower body workout. She's a beginner, so we're really just kind of focusing on the form and how to perform all the movements, making sure she knows exactly how to do it. So everything's gonna be really light, like 20 reps on every single movement, teaching her the basic exercises. It's literally all we're focusing on right now, so it won't be too long. Probably like, maybe I'd say 45 minutes or so. So anyways, I'm gonna go do that, and I'll catch up with you all in a little bit. Training session done. Back to Barnes and Noble. So it's currently 9.30 p.m. sitting down to my final big meal. Really freaking excited for this, guys. Got three servings of broccoli, getting those micronutrients in, 11 ounces of chicken breast, and then I got some, I, well, actually I have three servings of guacamole on top. I was really behind on my fats, so I'm so freaking excited to eat this. This makes the chicken so much better. This is really good guacamole, by the way. It's store-bought, which store-bought guacamole usually sucks, but this is actually really, really tasty. Got some salsa. 250 grams of white rice and what do you got bro <laughs> some turkey yeah i actually stole all the chicken it wasn't it. enough chicken so you gotta compensate you got turkey yeah. on deck hey he he took one for the team he's like you know what it still I'm looks good turkey. though no nah, it's I mean, still good guacamole see, just, turkey breast 
Uh, some deli meat turkey, why and not? And then just yeah. put blob of guac and... <laughs> blob of guac. This will make anything better. Trust me, it tastes good. Anything. All this stuff, it looks like a mess, but it's good. But yeah, my brother <laughs> kind of does the same thing, by the way. He has like two really big meals and like a snack in between. Oh, yeah. And it's just working really well, man. We're eating like kings while dieting. And we're on fairly high calories. Six weeks into our diet, 23, 2400 calories. We're living lavish, man. But anyways, we're watching some House of Cards. Be sure to like the video if you like House of Cards because this show is the shit. What episode are you guys on? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, we're gonna enjoy this food. And we got a bar. Oh yeah, also each eating a granola bar as well. Catch up on some more fats. So yeah, that is a fat, fat meal. So it is hella late right now. Something really unexpected happened. My uncle called me, my brother, and asked if we wanted to go see a movie. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. It's already like 10.30 by then. And we ended up seeing Baywatch. Really random. But it was a pretty good movie. I actually really liked it. I thought it was going to suck just because I looked up the ratings and we were kind of deciding on what movie we were going to watch. So we said, screw it. Ended up seeing Baywatch. I liked it. I would give it a six and a half, seven out of 10. Probably would have given it a five if I didn't see it in the theaters, just because seeing a movie in the theaters makes everything all better. If you walk into that movie expecting something else, then you're not gonna like it. But if you walk in expecting what you expect you're gonna see with something with the Zac Efron in The Rock, then you're gonna end up enjoying it. Yeah, I just overall thought it was entertaining. I don't know. Yeah, I'd give it probably a seven. I, what, what did you think of that movie? What would you give it? I'd probably give it like a solid seven. Solid seven. Seven. Just it was cheesy, but still really entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. I'm not gonna lie. Some of the parts were pretty damn cheesy, but yeah, I'm probably Zac like. Zac Efron's physique, though. <laughs> yeah, Zac Efron was fucking shredded, man. I, w I did not expect that at all. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I saw pictures and stuff. When you actually see the movie, dude was absolutely shredded, diced. I'm not gonna lie. I was. I was Myron. Were you Myron, bro? Myron hard. 100% Myron, his physique. So shout out to Zach Efron putting in that work to get that. And you know what? I, I guess like I might as well give my thoughts on this just because it's kind of like a trending topic on YouTube. Yeah, I guess I'll give my thoughts on Zach Efron's physique and whether or not I think that's attainable naturally or whether I thought he was on steroids for the role. But I genuinely, in my honest opinion, think that yes, his physique is attainable naturally. I guess I'll set down the camera right here. I did not expect I was gonna be giving my thoughts on Zac Efron's body, but you know what, screw it. We'll do this for a quick minute or two. But uh, let me explain myself on why I do think that his physique is attainable naturally. I read a few things two, three weeks ago, like before I saw this movie, but I read a few things on his diet and his training regimen. He was on a serious, serious cut. He was on something else, was very aggressive guys, something that I would never ever in a million years recommend anyone do. I think he was eating like 1600 calories a day extremely low carbs I think no more than like 60 grams of carbs and his protein was in the ranges of like one to one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight so his protein was really high probably to ensure he like kept all his muscle while he was training or something like that and then his like fats were pretty high uh, most of his calories were coming from fats to ensure that he was functioning normally his body was not shutting down I'm guessing uh, which is smart so yeah his diet was was absolutely insane he was on like 1600 calories a day I think for like a month straight maybe even over a month so huge huge deficit to get to his level of conditioning he was at around like 5% body fat and to be honest I never believed that until I saw the movie because usually when people say oh I'm like five six seven percent body fat they're usually like nine or ten it's a lot harder to get to a single digit body fat percentage than you actually think guys getting anything under like eight percent is pretty damn tough but after I saw that movie he's definitely at like 5%, 6% at most. So yeah, he did like some extreme freaking shit to get there. Second of all, you have to also judge his genetics, guys. So if you look at his past previous physiques, like in the neighbors and stuff like that, he had an ectomorphic frame. You could tell he's a type of dude that would really struggle to gain weight. He could diet on high amounts of calories outside of his genetics, his good genetics. He was training with frequency. I read another article where he did like a push-pull leg split, which was the first time he ever incorporated frequency 
UFC training and his routines. And also, it was the first time ever he included heavy strength training. It was the first time he included like progression, progressive training with compound movements. So he's doing like bench press, squats, deadlifts, barbell rows, weighted chin ups, weighted pull ups, stuff like that, all heavy. And he was, he was focusing, progressing on that. So when you give somebody dedicating like a year of his life to this movie role, right? With someone who's good genetics, dedicated all his time to good recovery, proper, proper training, an aggressive diet. And you know, he's got like a nutritionist to make sure he's all right and everything. Then you can definitely get to that level. Now, is that attainable as fast as he did it to most people to like 95% of the population? Probably not. You know, you're going to have to require a lot of time putting on that size and then cutting down. And even if I don't think most people, the general population could even get to that level of conditioning. I don't think most people can get to under 6% body fat. Getting to that level is not going to be something that's sustainable for anybody. The negative side effects you get from that are nowhere near worth being on that condition. And even if you guys think Zac Efron stays in that conditioning year round, by the way, hell no. You have to realize guys, this is a movie role. The movie clips you're seeing, he carved up. So he was doing like heavy, heavy carb days on those days, like properly timing it to where he looked the best. And obviously, you know, he's getting the best pump, stuff like that. It was like a, a photo shoot essentially every scene he was in. So he's looking the absolute best he possibly could in those scenarios. And you got to take that in consideration. He does not always look that freaking good. So that's that. And even if he was like two, 3% body fat higher than what he was for that movie role, which I'm sure he was only at that body fat percentage level for like a week or two, he would still look freaking incredible guys. An extra 2% would literally do his physique no harm. So yeah, that's my opinion on it. You have to realize guys also Zac Efron is like 5'10", 5'9", I think. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. And I think he was 165 pounds for that movie role. And I'm 5'7", 165 pounds. If I wanted to be that lean, I'd probably have to be 150 pounds or so, which no way would I ever want to get down that low. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of my opinions on it. And at the same time, even if he was on shit, who cares? That's my opinion. Who, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's his life. You never know. He's doing this movie role, getting paid millions of dollars. He's got the top nutritionist, top doctors to like look after him. You never know if he took something and no one will ever know except him. And I don't think it ever matters. So I don't know why it's like a huge cluster storm or, you know, like a clusterfuck of things in YouTube, whether or not he's natural. But I do think that's 100% attainable, but not by everybody. And I don't think it's sustainable. But yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Wow, I really did not expect to be doing this. This ended up being like seven minutes. But yeah, that's my opinion on it, guys. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll like title this video along the lines of Zac Efron's body and my thoughts on his physique being natural or not. But uh, yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy this kind of video, like 80% of the video being a vlog, and then the last 20% or so being like me discussing discussing a trending topic on YouTube or like me discussing my thoughts on something, you know, just expressing my thoughts. Uh, I kind of like that. I don't know. This was not planned, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and whether or not you agree with me, by the way, on if Zac Efron was natural or not for this movie role, please don't dislike the video. This is all just opinions, guys. I just hope you enjoyed my video and found it entertaining. That's all and helpful or like motivating. So yeah, give this video a like. If you did, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Got lots of cool things coming up. You don't want to miss out on it. I'll see you in the next video.